Now we're going to be talking about the two different types of air pressure that we have. We have thermal air pressure and dynamic air pressure. So the very first one, thermal air pressure, Okay, thermal air pressure occurs when we start to heat up um, or cool down the land. Um, so, uh, or just cooling down materials. So when I start to think about this, um, when we have our land, okay, and the sun starts to hit this surface, as we heat up the land, some of that heat is transferred to our air. Um, when we heat things up, we start to increase the kinetic energy. So we can just kind of write this um, down. So if we, you know, heat leads to um, an increase in kinetic energy. So our particles become busier, our air, the molecules inside the air, they start to vibrate more intensely, they start to move apart, and as they move apart, they start to expand and rise. Um, so this leads to increased particle movement. Okay, as we start to increase our movement, it's going to start to expand and rise, and Um, you can actually write, I'd say expands and rises. Okay, and it, when it starts to do that, what we start to see is that our um, air pressure increases. And that is written really tiny, but it says air pressure increases. So what's going on? Because we have these molecules and they're expanding, the air pressure starts to go up. Um, so that's what's happening with our warming air. Okay, so um, with our cooling air, it's the opposite. Okay, as we start to cool things down, um, we cool our air, the molecules, the kinetic energy starts to go down, it decreases. That leads to reduced particle movement, reduces particle movement. And this causes the air to condense or it gets closer together and it sinks. Okay, um, and that's going to be associated with a decrease in our air pressure. Okay, um, so the air starts to sink um, and that's what's going on. So what's happening on the surface? When we have heating, this warms the air and it starts to rise. Um, the heating creates a low pressure um, at this location. If we cool the air, and actually I like to think about this up at the top, as it rises, the air molecules spread out. Um, they do start to cool off. So we can see this cool air um, and cool air starts to lose its energy. Particles start to slow down, the air condenses, condenses and it starts to sink. Okay, so uh, warm air rises, cool air sinks. Um, this rising air is associated with our low pressures. Sinking air is associated with high pressure centers. All right, um, if you need a way to keep that in mind, um, my very silly kind of thing I came up with when I was learning all of this um, because I just kept thinking of the word low and rise um, just to kind of put them together. So low, I always thought of low rise genes don't ask me why. Um, so just remember the low pressure rises if you need to keep that. And jeans, which because they're pants, they keep you warm. So they're associated with warm air. Okay, so I hope that helps kind of keep that all together. So that's looking at the thermal air pressure.
The second type that we want to look at very quickly is our dynamic air pressure. Okay, dynamic air pressure is caused by air movement. Okay, um, and the thermal air pressure is kind of driving the system, but dynamic air pressure, when it starts going, it can override that thermal air pressure. So a couple of examples, um, we see our subtropical highs. And those are located at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south latitude. Okay, um, these are high pressure systems, so the air tends to be sinking. Um, and these will kind of take over the, any temperature differences that are happening in the area. So they kind of take over the whole area. Um, because the air is compressed, um, it's going to become dense in these locations and it sinks. So we have compressed air and it becomes dense and it sinks. And this whole system is going to override any thermal changes that we see happening in this area. Another place that we see this is at the ITCZ. This is the um, Intertropical Convergence Zone. So that's what that stands for. This is a dynamic low pressure. System and it's found at the equator. So that's zero degrees, okay? Um, we also see another dynamic low pressure at 60 degrees north and south latitude, and we have a dynamic high that's centered over our poles. So the North Pole, 90 degrees la uh, north latitude, and the South Pole at uh, 90 degrees south latitude. Um, so those are kind of the, the overriding systems that we see, and that's going to start to control our global wind belts, which we'll talk about later.